calling all crafty brides to be. Did you know you can turn a simple organza bag into a veil for your bachelorette party? Let me take you through this super fun upcycling project. First we need to prepare the base of our veil and there's not much to it. These bags should come with a little ribbon at the top where you tie it and we just need to cut this ribbon off and pull it out. So I'm going to do that to start with. Just cut it on both sides and then you can just pull those pieces of ribbon right out from the top of your organza bag. Next we need to carefully undo these stitched seams. So we're going to use a seam ripper and carefully rip our stitches on these two edges where the bag has been sewn together. So then we can open the bag up and create the base of our veil. So just take your stitch or seam ripper and you're going to carefully put it under your stitches of your organza bag and you're going to simply and carefully rip those and you can actually just pull apart the two sides as you go along carefully not to rip the organza bag and you're going to do that until you have ripped along those two edges apart. So I'm going to continue to do this along those two edges nice and carefully all the way around. Once you've ripped apart those two side seams you can open up your bag and there is the base for your veil. Now you can leave the edges, so the three edges of your veil bare, but if you want to add a little something to it, my favorite way to do this is to sew a cute trimming to the edge. I've got some leftover satin ribbon from my stash and I'll show you how you can sew this onto the edges of your veil. First, you're going to pin your trimming onto the edge and I'm actually going to use this fold to my advantage. So this is the little fold that was created when the bag was sewn together. So I'm actually going to pin my ribbon inside this fold all the way along those three edges. And you want to make sure you start pinning just under where you removed the ribbon from the bag, just under here. And also you're going to finish right under there too. So I'm going to go ahead and pin my ribbon into the fold all the way around on those three edges. Once you've reached the corners of your veil, you can cut off your ribbon and use a new piece for the next edge. So just place the next piece of ribbon on top of the edge you just folded over and pinned. And you're going to fold your new edge over on that corner. And you're gonna pin that corner down to secure it. And then I can just Continue to pin along my edge as I've been doing and I'm going to continue to do that for those three edges of my veil and I'll meet you back here when I've done that. I've pinned down my ribbon on those three edges and now I'm going to secure it with a machine zigzag stitch. I want to make sure that I start and end with a back stitch to secure my stitches. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this now. So stitch a few zigzag stitches to start and then create a back stitch. And I'm going to continue to do my zigzag stitches on all three edges.
So I've reached the end and I'm gonna finish with the back stitch. And I'm ready to remove and cut that off them from the machine. My base is ready. Now let me show you three fun ways you can decorate your lovely veil. First up, we've got pom-poms. These are super easy to make. As you can see, I've already attached some in various sizes here. Pom-poms are a great way to add a fun pop of color to your veils. And my favorite yarn to use for this is Paintbox Yarns Simply DK. And you can find the link for this yarn in the description below. There are so many amazing colors to choose from on the Lovecrafts website. I'll be showing you how to make a pom-pom using a pom-pom maker, which you can also find in various sizes on the Lovecrafts website. So let's start making our pom-pom. To begin, we're going to pull one side of our pom-pom maker. So you're just going to pull out these two pieces of your pom-pom maker. And what we're gonna do is we're going to wrap our yarn around those two pieces at the same time. And we're going to keep wrapping our yarn around those two pieces. And we're going to keep wrapping until we fill this semicircle. So our yarn should create a straight edge at the bottom of those two pieces. So I'm gonna keep wrapping until I'm satisfied with my full semicircle. And you can see these little edges here will stop your yarn from going over. So just make sure your yarn is not going beyond those pieces on the edges. I'm just gonna keep wrapping and that looks good. So we have a full semicircle and we can cut our yarn and close those two white pieces again into our pom-pom maker. And now we're going to open the other side and repeat the exact same process. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut all the loops that we wrapped around those two sides. So just take your scissors and guide it through the middle of those two white pieces that you wrapped around. Make sure your scissors are nice and sharp and pointy to get under all those loops. And you can see my little pom-pom starting to take shape. And what we're gonna do to secure and to finish our pom-pom is we're going to take another piece of yarn, cut that off, and we're going to use it to tie the middle and to secure all of our little strands together. So we're going to put that piece of yarn through the middle of our pom-pom maker and we're going to create a double knot in the middle to secure all the strands. So pull that tightly to secure and make another knot And what we're gonna do is, to make it extra secure, we're gonna bring those two strands to the other side and we're going to repeat by tying a double knot again. So my pom-pom's secure. And now to remove it from the pom-pom maker, what we're gonna do is we're going to pull out our two pieces again, the two white pieces, from the middle of the pom-pom maker on both sides. And then we can pop this middle bit of the pom-pom maker right out. And there's our little pom-pom. 
And now all I've got to do is trim my pom-pom down, making sure I don't cut off this piece of yarn that I used to tie the middle of the pom-pom because we're going to use it later to attach it to our veil. So just trim down the strands. You might want to do this on top of a bin, not like I'm doing, <laughs> until you're satisfied with the size of your pom-pom. To attach your pom-poms onto your veil, simply thread a tapestry needle with those two yarn ends that you use to tie the middle of your pom-pom. So take the first end and thread your tapestry needle. And you're just going to thread that yarn anywhere on your veil through to the back of the veil. And you're gonna do the same with the other end. And you're going to thread it through to the back of the veil, making sure you don't go through the same hole as your first strand. So just go further down and thread that through to the back. And then all you've got to do is turn your veil to the back and you can create a knot with these two strands to secure it on. So just tie a knot a few times to make sure it's secure. I'm gonna do this three times just to be sure. And then I can go ahead and just cut down these two yarn ends nice and short so they're not visible on the right side of my veil. And there you are. And that's how you add cute little pom-poms to your veil. Let's see what's next. Next, I'm going to show you how to decorate your veil with some delicate embroidery. This gorgeous pattern that I started to stitch is called Forget Me Not by Pink Box Crafts. And I'm using Paintbox Craft Stranded Cotton. You can find the links for the free download and the thread in the description below. I've printed out my pattern and I just need to pin it to the back of my organza fabric ready for tracing. So I'm just gonna match up to the little flowers I have already embroidered. And I'm gonna pin that down around the pattern in a few places. Then I'm gonna use a standard biro pen to transfer my design onto the fabric. So you don't want your pen to be too inky or runny. Just pick a standard biro pen and simply trace your design onto your organza fabric. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this for my last little flower, tracing all the lines So you can see my last little flower has been transferred onto my organza fabric and now I just need to pop my embroidery hoop on ready for sewing. So take your inner hoop and place it on the back of your fabric and then take your outer hoop and just pop it over your inner hoop on the front side of the fabric. You can tighten the screw at the top of your hoop. Now you want to make sure your organza fabric is tight in the middle, but do not pull it too much as it's a very delicate fabric, just enough so that it's not sagging in the middle. And this just makes it easier for your embroidery stitches to go through. 
I'm ready to start stitching and the whole of this design is stitched with two strands of cotton. So cut off a piece in your first color and then you're gonna pull apart two strands from that piece. So just find two strands and gently pull it apart from the others. And then you might want to separate those two strands so that they're not twisted when you embroider. So just pull apart the two and then you can straighten them out, bring them back together and you can thread your sewing or embroidery needle. So just thread your needle and then you'll want to create a double knot at the end of those two strands. Let's start with our petals and with the satin stitch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring my needle up from the outer circle at the middle of my flower. So just pick any petal and put your needle up through the outer circle of the middle of your flower and you're going to bring your thread all the way up until your double knot stops it from going through. And then you're simply just going to follow the outline of your first petal. So just put your needle through on the outline of the petal and pull your thread through for your first satin stitch. Then you're gonna continue along to cover the whole petal with the satin stitch. So up from the middle, from the outer circle in the middle of your flower and down following the line, the outer line of your petal. You can do your satin stitch like that, or if you prefer, you can come up from the middle of your flower and then put your needle down on the outer circle next to the stitches you've been making and up through the middle again, just to make your stitches a little bit quicker. So you can just go through those two at the same time to make your stitches quicker along the way. I'm gonna show you that again. So you've come up from the middle of your flower, you can go down and then up again through the middle. So I'm gonna continue to do this satin stitch. Meet me back here when I have run out of thread and I'll show you how to finish off so you can start again in your next section of embroidery stitches. So I've not got much thread left. So to finish off, I can just put my needle through to the back And then I need to finish with a knot. So you can just go under the stitches you made on the back side. So just a couple of stitches. And just finish with a knot. Just go under again. and then make a knot by going through 
that loop. Oh, you might have to manually do it if your needle pops off from the thread. So just take the ends and put it through the little loop you just made. and pull to complete your knot. And then if you want to be extra tidy, you can go under all of your stitches with your needle of one of the petals and then thread your needle with the remaining ends from where you finished and then you can pull that end right through under those stitches and then what you can do is you can trim the end to finish and that's the satin stitch i'm going to finish all the petals and the outer circle in the middle of my flower this way as it states in the pattern with the suggested colors. Next, we're gonna fill the middle of our little flower with some French knots. So in your next color, put your needle up anywhere in the middle of your flower and pull until the knot at the end of your thread stops it from going through. And now to make a French knot, what you're going to do is you're going to take your thread closest to where you came up from and then you're going to wrap your needle twice. And you're going to hold that thread, not too tightly, and put your needle through to the back again, making sure you don't go through the hole you came up from, just a little bit further away from it. And you're going to pull your needle through and that should make your first French knot. So I'm gonna show you that again. So come up next to the French knot you just made. Wrap your needle twice with the thread and put your needle down through to the back and pull right through to make your second French knot. So I'm gonna continue to make my French knots until I've filled that middle of my flower and I'm gonna finish off the exact same way that I've been doing. The stem of our flower is created using the split stitch. So to begin, we're going to come up at the top of our stem and we're going to make a small straight stitch following the line of the stem. So just further down, go back through the fabric and make a straight stitch. And now to make your split stitches, you're going to come up in the middle of the stitch you just made, you're gonna come back up and you're going to literally split your two strands from the stitch you just made. 
So you're just going to split them apart and you're going to come up and then you're going to make your next straight stitch. And you're going to repeat the same process, come up through the middle of the straight stitch you just made, splitting it in half. And make your next, next straight stitch. And so on. You're going to repeat this stitch for the whole of the stem and you can see your split stitches makes a sort of chain effect which is lovely. So I'm going to continue to do my split stitches until I've reached the end of my stem. And to finish again we're going to turn to the back and go under one of the stitches we just made on the back side and we're going to finish with a knot. And we can weave our end back under a few of the stitches and we can trim to finish. The leaves are created with the fishbone stitch. So to begin, come up on the pointy bit of your leaf at the top. And then start with a straight stitch on the middle of your leaf. So just meet the line in the middle, roughly, and make a straight stitch. And then to continue with your fishbone stitch, you're going to come up on the right, following the line of the leaf, the outer line, next to where you came up at the pointy bit of the leaf. You're going to come up and then you're going to go down just below your stitch that you made in the middle of your leaf and you're going to do the same from the other side. So come up, come up on the left side, up through the outer line of your leaf and then come down again in the middle just below the stitch you just made, following the line on the middle of the leaf. And you're going to continue with this until you have filled the whole of your leaf down to the bottom. I'm going to do this, finish off as I've been doing and repeat the exact same with my other leaf. Let's finish our leaf with some back stitches. So just start from the bottom of your leaf and in the middle and bring your needle up and make a small straight stitch in the middle. You can follow the line that was created with your fish bone stitch, this line here, and make a small straight stitch to start and then you're gonna come up further down that middle and you're going to create your back stitch by going down the same hole on your first straight stitch. And that's how you create simple back stitches. You're going to create a few of those in the middle.
just a few. You're not going to go all the way to the top of your leaf, just go about three quarters in. Gonna make just one more. And I'm happy with that. And now I'm just gonna turn to the back and finish off as I've been doing. I've finished all my embroidery stitches and you'll notice that I do have some little threads that are visible here on the front side. So what you can do is turn to the back and you can actually, with some fabric glue, glue down these threads into or onto the back of your stitches so that they're not visible on the right side. So just take a thin paintbrush and gently paint some fabric glue onto your loose ends and paint them on the back of your stitches and away from sight. You don't need a lot and you want to make sure you don't put glue on the actual organza bag as that will be visible on the right side of your work. And that's how you embroider beautiful delicate flowers onto your veils. Join me in the next bit for some crochet applique fun. If you prefer crochet over embroidery, you can make these adorable daisy appliques. I improvised these using paint box yarns, cotton four ply, and excellent finer yarn for these delicate small details. Grab the yarn link in the description below and let's go over the speedy pattern together. With my three millimeter hook, I'm ready to begin the middle of my little flower. And to start, I'm going to make a slip knot. And I'm gonna make sure to leave a long tail for sewing my little flower onto the veil later on. So what we're gonna do is, we're going to hold the tail, the generous tail on our left hand, and we're going to make a loop by bringing the working side of the yarn over the tail to the left, just a little loop. And then to complete our slip knot, we're going to bring our working side yarn again under and up through that loop. So just pull that up, holding the tail with your left hand and pulling up to complete your slip knot. And then you can just pop it onto your hook and pull the working side of the yarn again to adjust the loop onto your hook. So to begin, we're going to make four chains. So for you beginners to make a chain, we're going to put our yarn over our hook and bring it through the loop that's on our hook to make our first chain. So I'll show you that again. Yarn over your hook and pull through the loop that's on your hook. Two chains. Yarn over pull through the loop on your hook, three chains. Yarn over, pull through that loop, four chains. So now we're going to form a ring for the middle of our flower. And we're going to do this by making a slip stitch into the first chain that we made to close, close this ring. So we're going to insert our hook into that first chain and to make our slip stitch, we're going to yarn over and pull through that chain and the loop that's on your hook all at once. And there we've formed a little ring and we're ready to start round one of our pattern. So here we're going to chain one and this does not count as a single crochet. What we're going to do here is we're going to make eight US single crochets, that's eight UK double crochets, into the middle of our ring. So to do this, we're going to insert our hook into the middle of the ring. So there should be a little hole at the middle. So insert your hook into the middle and you want to make sure as you do your single crochets that you're working over the tail from the slip knot you made at the beginning of the pattern. And this will allow you to pull the tail to close the little hole at the middle of your flower tight. 
So we're going to yarn over, you are going to pull up a loop from the middle of our ring and to complete your first single crochet we're going to yarn over and pull through the loops, the two loops on our hook. So there's my first single crochet complete out of the eight. I'll show you that again. So we're going to insert our hook to the middle of our ring, yarn over, pull up a loop from the middle of the ring and you should have two loops. Yarn over, pull through the two loops on your hook to complete your second single crochet. So I'm gonna continue to do this until I have eight single crochets in total. So there's my eight single crochets. And to finish round one, we need to make a slip stitch into the very first single crochet that we made. So remember we have the chain one that we did, which does not count as a single crochet. And then we have eight single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're going to make a slip stitch into the very first single crochet that we made. So insert your hook at the little chain at the top of your first single crochet, yarn over and pull through that stitch and the loop on your hook all at once to complete round one. And you can do this later, but you can pull your tail as you've crocheted over it you can pull that closed to close a little hole at the middle of your ring. So to start round two, we're going to chain two in our next color. One, two. And next what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make two US double crochets, that's two UK treble crochets, into the single crochet we just started our two chains. So to make your double crochet, we're going to yarn over and we're going to insert our hook into that same stitch under the chains we just made. And remember to work over the tails you have cut off. And we're going to yarn over and we're going to pull up a loop from that stitch. And we should have three loops on our hook. To complete our double crochet, we're going to yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through the last two loops on our hook. And there's my first double crochet. So into the same stitch, we're going to create another double crochet, yarn over, put your hook through that same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through the last two loops. And there's your second double crochet into that same stitch. And to complete your first petal, you're going to chain two, one, two, and we're going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch. So we're going to put our hook into that next stitch, yarn over and pull through the stitch and the loop on your hook all at once. So there's your very first little petal complete and I'm going to repeat this pattern until I have eight little petals in total all the way around. So I'm going to show you again how to do that petal. So you're going to chain two after you've completed that slip stitch. One, two, and into the same stitch where you've done those two chains, we're going to make two double crochets. Yarn over, put your hook into that same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, 
three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through the last two loops. And again, a double crochet into the same stitch. Yarn over, put your hook into that same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through the last two loops. And to complete my second little petal, I'm going to chain two, one, two, and make a slip stitch into the next stitch. Put your hook through that next stitch, yarn over, pull through the stitch, and the loop on your hook all at once. And there's my second little petal complete. So I'm gonna continue to repeat this pattern all the way around until I have eight little petals in total. I've completed my eight petals and my very last slip stitch of my last petal after doing those two chains can go into the same stitch where we did our first set of two double crochets. So I'm going to insert my hook into that same stitch and make a slip stitch. And then I can just finish off. I'm going to cut off my yarn and I'm going to yarn over my hook and pull through the little loop on my hook and I can pull that little tail. Next, we're going to turn to the back of our little finished daisy, and we need to tidy away all these little tails, except the long one you left from that slip knot at the very beginning of the pattern. So you can just leave that aside. You can cut the tails where you changed color, because you should have crocheted over those already, and you can pull those a little bit to tighten your daisy. And you can cut those off. And then with your very last tail from finishing off, you can just go ahead and thread your tapestry needle and you can weave that under your stitches at the back of your flower. So just go over I'm under even your stitches with that little tail all the way around. And once you're happy that it's nice and secure, you can also go ahead and trim that off. To attach our little flower swirl veil is actually super simple and as I previously mentioned we're going to make the most out of the long tail we left from the slip knot at the very beginning of our pattern. So we're going to thread our nice and sharp needle with this tail and we're going to Pick wherever we want to attach our little flower and we're going to put our needle through to the back of the organza fabric and then we can turn to the back once we've done that and we're simply going to stitch our little flower on. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert our hook through the veil at the mi middle of our flower. So through the veil and the middle of our flower. And we're going to pull that through to make our first stitch. And we can do that again just to be very secure. And then we can finish with a knot under those stitches we just made. So go under those stitches 
and then under again, creating a loop. And we're going to finish with a knot by going under and up through that loop. And we're gonna pull that right up to secure the stitches. And then we can just snip off the excess tail that we have left, nice and short so it's not visible on the right side of our fabric. So you've just learned three amazing ways you can decorate your lovely veils and now you're probably wondering how do you actually make these wearable, right? Well stick around, I'll be going through this next. The first way I'm going to show you how to make your veils wearable is probably the most easy and effortless way to do it. First you're going to need a headband like this one and we're actually going to feed it through the little space at the top of the organza where we took out that satin tie at the very beginning. Then we're going to stitch it on to the headband to secure it. This means you'll need a headband that is covered with fabric so that you can stitch onto it. If you've got a standard plastic or metal headband at home, you can always reuse it and wrap some fabric around it or yarn so that you have a surface to stitch onto later on. So let's put our headband through that little space. So find the little hole where your tie was taken out and you can literally feed that through the little space all the way to the end. And then you're going to want to position it so that it's in the middle and symmetrical on the headband. You get this lovely little frill at the top of your headband. So now we're going to secure it on both sides with a little stitch. To just make a few stitches in the same place, going under the organza and the fabric that's around your headband. And then you can go under the stitches you just made and complete your little stitch with a knot. And you can hide your tail by going under the fabric of the headband and coming back up. And then you can trim that off. And you're gonna repeat the same for the other side. Next I'll show you how to attach your veils onto these little comb clips which are the most standard veil accessory out there. We're going to cut this little extra strip at the top of our veil where we had that satin tie and we're going to reuse it to wrap around the comb so that we have some fabric to stitch onto. So let's go ahead and cut this little strip at the top. So just above where you started stitching your satin trimming. And just follow the stitches at the top. And cut that piece off. all the way across. And 
And then we're going to cut off this plain piece. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And this is the piece we're going to use for the wrapping around the comb. So we can go ahead and unfold it. So it should be doubled. So unfold that and again, you're going to cut that in half and you can follow the fold line for that. Does it need to be neat? And there's your extra strip to use for the wrapping. So I'm going to use this little piece of organza to wrap around the base of my comb. So just leave a tail at the back of your comb to wrap over just so that it's secure onto the comb. And then I'm going to make sure to go through and in between each tooth around the base. So just take your organza strip and start wrapping around and in between those teeth and make sure that you're wrapping around the little strip behind your comb. So keep wrapping all the way across in between each tooth. You might find it easier if you sort of twist your little strip as you go along. So once you've wrapped all the way to the end, you can actually trim off that little tail. And then your last tail where you did your last wrapping, you can thread your tapestry needle and you can weave the tail back under your wrapping. So just go under your wrapping. You might have to do it in sections as the comb is curved, so it can be a little bit tricky. And then once you're happy with that, you can trim down the tail. Now to prepare the veil for sewing onto the comb, we need to thread a needle with some standard sewing thread and we're going to make a knot at the end of that. I would make a triple knot as the fabric we're working on has quite a loose weave and we don't want the knot to go through as we're stitching. Then we're going to create a running stitch closely along the top edge of the veil where we've cut off that extra piece for the strip for the comb. So we're going to start at the ribbon. Just put your needle through, down and up. And we're going to continue this all the way along the top edge of the veil. So just down and up all the way across. And this is going to make our veil gather at the top so we can match its size to the comb. So I'm going to continue to do my running stitch all the way across and then once my needle 
is full up with some fabric, I can go ahead and pull it through and I can keep doing that across the top until I've reached the other end. Once you've done that, you're going to keep your needle and remaining thread on and you're going to pin this top edge where you did the gathering with the running stitch to the base at the back of your comb. So with the right side of the veil facing up, you're going to pin this top edge at the back of your comb where you did the wrapping. So just match the size of the veil to the comb and you're going to simply pin that on making sure you catch the veil and the wrapping around the comb. And then you're simply going to secure your veil onto your comb with a whip stitch with the remaining thread that you have left all the way across. Just keep doing your whip stitches, catching the veil and the wrapping at the base of your comb all the way across. And these don't necessarily have to be neat as they'll be hidden when you're wearing your veil. I'm gonna finish with a knot at the end as I've been doing. And you can, again, put your tail under where you've stitched to hide it and you can finally trim that off to finish. Veils all done and now you're ready to complete those fabulous bachelorette outfits. I want to know what veil is your favourite. Comment below with pom-poms, embroidery or crochet. Let us know if you're going to give this amazing upcycling project a go. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the Lovecraft channel for more. Happy crafting!